You want a perfect character in Fallout New Vegas. You want that juicy 100% completed skill stat chart, baby. So I've compiled all the correct information, meaning I'm not going to leave you hanging without teaching you all the best tips and tricks, which you deserve. None of this, oh, some perks don't pass over in the skill reset. That's just simply not true. I've done the data analysis. I've even created my own charts. I've done all the testing and it was a lot of testing. You see, I figured out the lowest level each one of your skills needs to be at to finish leveling them off with just the books in the game. And none of these single use perks for skill leveling such as comprehension or educated is needed. Yes! After learning this information, you will be able to build your character however you want with double perks, access to obtain infinite ammo with any ammo source, a plethora of armor for sale to earn all them caps, and three levels left over once you start your adventure into the wastelands. Making it feel like a true achievement instead of feeling like you're just typing in console commands. No, this game's greatness is too vast. It holds the three ingredients for perfection. from the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yes! We are in the wastelands, everybody. This game is incredible, so create your character, finish dialogue, and I'll meet you here in a second. You're awake. Huh? How about that? Whoa, easy there, easy. You've been out cold a couple of days now. Why don't you just relax a second? Good. So here we are, you've got the DLCs connected you've created your character and this is where we begin it is best to get a save right here in case you ever want to change your stats in the future this is the perfect place to do that there's doctor's bag there's a today's physician yes there's lots of stuff to grab here so once you go and ransack this doc's house grab everything that you need Meet me at the Victomatic, and we can talk about the special skills. Now, because we're performing an exploit to give us double the amount of perks that we normally would have, it's very important for our stat allocation on our special to be where we want it to get the perks that we're trying to go for. So in my case, I intend after I do the skill reset to have a high strength, meaning that I'll get all of my strength perks on the second run through, which will then allow us to easily have 10 intelligence and nine luck. 10 intelligence is gonna allow us to get 15 points of skill distribution each level and nine points in luck is gonna give us five points to all of our skills. Look at that. Maybe them bullets done your brain some good. Well, we know your vitals are good. But that don't mean them bullets didn't leave you nuttered in a bighorn or dropping. What do you say you take a seat in my couch and we go through a couple of questions? See if your dogs are still barking. Best guess for what you think he said down in the comments. All right. Well, that's all she wrote. 
I don't have nothing to compare it to, so maybe you'd better just have a look at the results. See if it all seems right to you. Now, if you do intend on following along exactly the way that I am showing this video, then we have to realize having one charisma is going to naturally put our barter and our speech at motherfucking fucking motherfucking shit. Oh shit. What the fuck? I don't motherfucking give a shit. But what? Uh 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 uh. Nine. So we have to realize that we are going to need to put one of these points in barter or speech. I highly recommend barter because we're going to pick up a salesman weekly here shortly. And I'll also be attaching one of these skill buffs to repair and survival because we need 45 repair and survival in order to obtain one of the four no level perks that we have to obtain. Thing. But more on that later. I got a form for you to fill out so I can get a sense of your medical history. Just a formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history of getting shot in the head. Now, on this, when you're choosing your traits, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to choose small frame so I can get that extra point to agility, which will allow me to get tunnel runner. But really, you can choose whatever. All right, I guess that about does it. Come with me, I'll see you out. Here, these are yours. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before you leave town. She can help you learn to fend for yourself in the desert. She'll likely be at the saloon, but try not to get killed anymore. I can't make no promises. So before we actually leave the doc's house, there is something that we can do because we have such a high intelligence. Having intelligence at 10 is naturally going to put our science and our repair skills at 27 naturally which will allow us to come over to the broken submachine gun repair that sucker because it's only 25 that we need and same for the chemistry set we only need 25 science to come either make some stent packs or some drugs but i'm definitely going to choose stent packs because it's uh, the smarter choice and these will be located throughout the world so if you ever find this again you're already set I really enjoyed those sounds there. So after the onslaught of DLC quest notifications, I usually grab a save, but we can um, get moving here. And we'll take the doc's advice, head over to the Prospector Saloon, and we'll greet Sunny. Science. Sunny smiles. We can just activate this first message and Basically, all of the NPCs' dialogue options from here on out. And uh, she'll walk in the back here, and we gotta enter her radius so she can give us a gun. And we'll do this little tutorial thing, shooting a bottle. Well, that's a start. But I don't reckon you came to me to learn to fight sarsaparilla bottles. And she's got jokes. Uh, you can either continue the tutorial, I'm gonna end it here. Hey, do that somewhere what? else. What, lady? You just told me to shoot the bottles. You're crazy, crazy woman. Okay, anyways. We'll head inside, talk to the infamous the Joe Cobb. We don't really have to talk to him, we can just say goodbye. And uh, because we have the DLCs, we are given 10 throwing spears. This is crucial for us moving forward. Not really, but it's just really powerful early game. So uh, I don't know if you could notice, but I actually do have some mods installed. Just a, a simple sprinting mod and a climbing mod. Um, just for my own entertainment. It, does, it affects nothing that we're doing in here, in, in this video, but just wanted to throw that out there. What do you want now? Yes, as I was saying, we can just uh, activate the first message, and because we have 10 intelligence, we can just destroy this pea brain sized brain of yeah. the Joe Cobbs. Get some extra experience. We, we don't really need it, but I'm just saying, get some extra stoof and stuff. So we'll run over to kill Ringo, because that's uh, what we accepted to do. We accepted to go up past the Doc's house up here, into the Poseidon Energy Station, and uh, we'll go talk to... That's close enough. Who are you, and what do you want with me? Dr. Ringo! Which, if we um, continue one option, and then we go down to the bottom, we'll see what are it's the rules of Caravan. Game. He'll give us a free deck of cards 
before we kill him. So, uh, grab that. Don't forget that. And then we can, um... Basically, take his head for proof, y you know? Yeah. Yep, there's Ringo. I'll just uh, loot his body, take some caps, and uh, let me see how I can uh, grab this. Yep, okay. For proof. And then we'll just we'll loot the store. There's some good items there. You eyeballing me? And before we get uh, too hyped, I almost I almost took him out there. We gotta talk to him now? again. We have to talk to him one more time because he gives us the quests to then perform the exploit. Once we get these optional quests, that is what opens up the door for the exploit. So let's take Joe Cobb's head. We, we're gonna need to take his head off. And, um, we'll also finish off the rest of the, uh, the powder gang. Y you see, it's, it says that we failed the quest, but actually we just beat the game. We just beat the game, and all we have to do is get, get hidden. Perfect, and we can just take this guy's, can take his leg. Awesome. This is going perfectly. That guy is still dying. I don't know if you could hear that. That guy was still dying. So Joe Cobb actually has a stealth boy. Grab that. And um, I'm being detected. So let me come up here. Still being detected. Okay. I don't know from where, but loot that guy. I mean, that guy's, like, staring at Joe Cobb. I don't know what, how he can detect me. Just take this guy's stuff. And then this guy's turned around, so I don't know what's really going on here. Uh, there, I thought there was another guy somewhere. Whoa, cowboy! What are you doing here? Just coming out of nowhere. It's, uh, gonna have to take your head for that. Yep, there it is. No problem at all. No problem. And then, yeah, we're hidden. We're hidden again. So let's uh, work on this. A nice abdomen kill. It's perfect. Okay. Come take this guy's stuff. Awesome. We're, we're, we're working now. We're, we're trucking along. And uh, the final powder ganger. Ooh, took his entire arm. His tire arm is stuck on the RV there. Perfect. I didn't. I did not mean to grab that. Let me just drop the cleaver real quick. I did not know it made that sound. Okay. All right. So now that we've taken care of the entire powder gang, we can head over to the general goods store because this is where we actually perform the exploit with our best buddy, our best pal Chet. Hey there. What's up, Chet? You must be the one Doc Mitchell. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna need you to go sit down over on those chairs over there. Thank you, my guy. So here is the salesman weekly that we have to pick up. We need to. It's because we have one charisma. We need that 25. Uh, Chet, I want you to sit down, buddy. Now, I, okay, let me just show you what I'm talking about real quick. So, the Salesman Weekly gives plus 10 to your barter skill, and... You looking to buy some supplies? Yeah, the Powder Ganger stuff. What? Why the hell would I want to do that? So, as you can see, there's actually... You need 25. Yeah, quit it with the crazy talk. You need 25 in either speech or barter, and because there's the Salesman Weekly here, we can just use barter. But uh, I'm, gonna need, I'm gonna need you to sit down, Chet, okay? Don't... Don't make me force you to sit down. Uh, there, mm, there we go. All right, perfect. Awesome. Now, I'm just going to take a seat myself. I'm going to grab a save right here because it's very important to do that. Always save. And then we can activate the Salesman Weekly and discuss setting ourselves up.
You looking to buy some supplies? With a macro. So I'm going to unplug my controller because I'm on the PC version, the Steam version. This again. What makes you think I've changed my mind? Now, Razer hasn't sponsored this video, but I highly recommend they should uh, keep me in their visions. Because I'm going to teach you how to set up a macro. We're going to go create a new macro. I've already named it Auto Clicker. And you can basically just have a left click, press down, and a left click release for 0 0.01 second. Then once you have that set up, you can go out and select what key you want it to. And you can see at the top, I have auto clicker as the name that I've set it. And once you go down to playback options and set it as toggle continuous playback and press the key it's assigned to, you will then start the magic that is this exploit. Yes. So get yourself a macro. You don't have to do it through Razer. I just have it. It's just easy set up because it has the program already attached. All right, so let's check this out one more time in action on the dialog box. It is important where you place your cursor. So if you put it at the bottom, you can see I landed on speech. But since we're going for barter, I'm going to be a little, you could go a little higher than I'm here. But you activate your macro and you can see it's activating both the barter option and also the dialog option to get into this menu here. So get yourself set up with a macro because you don't want to be doing this, pressing the button every single time. I recommend doing this before work or going to sleep because this is going to take a long time. Six hours later. Yeah, about six hours. It's going to take you about six hours using this to get to level 50. But you can tell you're level 50 because you, you stop actually getting experience. All right, all right. And once you're ready to leave the menu here, take it easy now. You're gonna get bombarded with some stuff here. So you're idolized by the powder gangers, and you're immediate. You're level 50 now, so it's gonna immediately start that level process. I wasn't able to get a save before this menu popped up, but you want to get yourself a save as soon as possible. Now let's have a conversation about these perks because that's probably the most important information that I've found so far. You see, I'm going to set my repair and my survival at 45 and make sure that I do this at level two because we're going to need to obtain one of the four no level perks that you see listed in my little chart here. And this is because no level two or level four perks will pass over during the skill reset. We're allowed to get these level two, level four perks after we do the exploit or the reset. But on this first round, we can only get junk rounds, light touch, old world gourmet, and in shining armor. I don't actually think it's possible to get in shining armor at level two because of how high the science requirement is, but you could probably get it at level four if that's what you're into, baby. It's completely up to you. But I'll say it again because of how important it is. No level two or level four perks on the first run will pass over after you do the reset. You have to get them after you've done the reset and you're getting your other perks on your second round of leveling up all the way. <laughs> This is uh, me from the future of video editing. I wanted to jump in here real quick to establish a few things. First of all, visual proof that you cannot have level two or level four perks pass over, but also something else that I need to correct myself on. You see, I'm level 50, starting from the very top of my perk list. I'm gonna head all the way down and you can see in this leveling up run that I did, I got every single no level level two and level four perk besides bloody mess and thought you died which is a level 50 perk and bloody mess is a level six perk but i got every and then wild wasteland trigger discipline those are the bonus perks that you can grab after you which we'll talk about this spot here more in a second but after you do your fin your rebuild character you go do the reset which i'm not gonna it doesn't matter right now. I'm just doing this for explanation. You see we're leveling up. When we go to our perk list, we can see that it's been cut dramatically. Okay, our scroll bar has disappeared. The only low level perks that were kept in Shining Armor, Junk Rounds, Light Touch, Old World Gourmet, and Cannibal, which is what I'm correcting myself on. I didn't realize this until I reviewed this footage, but Cannibal also stays. So let's get back to where we left off. 
So you can see that I've, I'm finally getting my save here. I ended up getting light touch and, and level two, but I get a save right here and that's perfectly fine. But let's hop back to this save that we just got because I actually want to show everything that we've really obtained from doing this whole dialogue option for six hours straight. So as, as you can see before the whole level process starts, we're level two because once we exit out of here, it's going to start leveling us up like crazy. And again, I got light touch on when I leveled up to two. You can see all my special stats here just to show it again in case uh, you're just skipping to this part. And then to show what my skill stats are looking like real quick. But to be completely honest, the main reason for doing this other than getting to level 50 and being able to get double the amount of perks we normally would is if we come into our items and the appeal section we now have 8989 leather armor pieces that's insane and then in our ammo ammo section you can see our nine millimeter rounds is at a crazy amount and we can use this to exploit any other ammo source to have this amount which is insane and i'll talk about that a little bit later so i just want to take this time while i have this whole process sped up it's sped up by 10 just just to let you know so from level 2 all the way to 50 here's my process but some things to keep in mind while you're going through this leveling process well honestly the most important thing to keep in mind is after you get your first no level perks on level 2 and level 4 getting level 6 perks and beyond they're all available for you to keep after doing the reset so no problem getting any level six or above perks you see the whole idea behind my whole stat allocation setup is that i don't need to spend any perks on upgrades or stat points or anything like that such as educated or comprehension i could spend all of my stat points on high upgrade perk requirements because some of the best perks in the game have the highest skill requirements like such perks as laser commander or slayer you just kind of have to go down the list i would recommend at level two just going down the whole list and figuring out how you want to build your character and remember when we do this stat reset all of our special points are going to be allocated to where we actually want them to be to be playing the game so all the perks that you didn't get like how i have one strength i'm going to be able to get all of those strength perks on the second round these are all the perks that I've chosen for my character's build. Again, you can choose whatever. Just kind of, you know what I mean? Figure out what those really high skill requirements are and just kind of shoot for that. And really everything else, all the other skill points don't really matter. Because uh, on when we do the reset, we're going to set our skills to where we can max them out to 100. So let's start to talk about this great reset that basically gives us double perks. Look how excited my character is. Look at this guy. I mean, I'm excited. All right. So if you didn't grab long haul, then I don't know why you didn't because you should have grabbed long haul um, just because it's an amazing perk. But basically, if you're overweight, as you can see, I'm clearly over the weight that I can carry. What long haul does is it allows us to fast travel while being encumbered. So when we travel to Good Springs, it puts us right in front of the sign here. This is where I like to drop all of my leather armor. In the future, whenever I actually get all of the locations for the shops, then I can come back to this location, pick these up, and I'm all good to go. But here's some information that I don't think a lot of people know about, which is if we are to run back to where we killed the powder gangers which i believe we actually do have to kill all of the powder gangers for this to work i've actually only ever tried it this way but there are five powder gangers and joe cobb i'm just gonna check these two far guys because i already know they don't have anything but of course you can see they, don't, they just have their same loot that they died with or, or whatever i left on them but the other three out of the five are going to have the same amount of armor that you received from doing the exploit with, with Chet. So, this guy has a set, 
And then this last guy has a set. I sped up the time because I was encumbered and I couldn't walk fast. But that crazy amount of armors, I'm going to then fast travel back to this location and drop the rest of my leather armors. So in the future, if I ever need more caps, I can just come come here after getting all the locations for the shops that have a lot of caps in them and I can then just sell all these leather armors. It's incredible. And if you somehow manage to use all of the ammo that we've obtained doing this exploit, then you can come back to Chet and do this again. And I'm almost positive it refills all of the dead bodies up with more leather armor, my dude. This is insanity. So of course, I'm gonna drop myself another save and we can talk about this actual reset in the final part. Bang, bang. So I believe I have found the most consistent location for resetting your stats. And here, starting at the Prospector Saloon and General Goods Store, we can just follow along the road west, past the Docks House, and also past the uh, Poseidon Energy, Rip, Ringo, and uh, into this bush, past these two trees, up this hill, you're going to have to jump, which I'd fail at doing. But up this hill, we're going to come across another set of, of, a, of trees and a rock. And to the left of this is the last little hump where we will find two bushes. And this is the most consistent location that I've found. Super easy to remember. And um, yeah, let me just show you how it works. So getting a certain distance away from Good Springs pops a message up that asks if you want to rebuild your character. And because they didn't expect you to get level 50 before exiting Good Springs, we're going to have some interesting stuff happen here. So at this point, actually sets your character up with the attributes that you want to have playing the game. And this is the way I'm going to lay it out, which I'm going to kind of dive into a little bit in here in a second. And these you can you can set them up however you want whatever you feel comfortable but the way i'm, I'm going to show you how i lay it out it, it's going to be just fine having these anywhere you want so the one trait that i need to get for the setup that i'm going for is skilled um you can have anything else like wild wasteland or small frame but you have to get skilled in order to really put all the skills level where they need to be basically and that 10 percent minus xp is going to come in handy actually for us when we're leveling our skills so once we finish and travel onward you can see we go all the way up not to 50 because having skilled only allows us to go up to 47 which in my opinion is really cool because it allows me a little bit of time to get one of the melee books so I can get the perk Unstoppable Force at level 48. But here I'm level one and we can see if you wanna pause or whatever, but we can see that I have all, all the perks that I left with last time. I have all 25 perks. Now when it comes to the special attributes, I have mine set up in a very particular way. So if you follow a different pattern you might have to do some different stuff but when i level up to level two which is the first choice of perks that you get i have to get intense training and put one point towards intelligence this will give me all of the skill points that i need in order to put every single one of my skills at the level they need to be at to finish them off with reading the books in the game this is also with taking all of the implants into consideration getting my luck to nine and having each one of my other attributes level up by one Alright, so this time I'm kind of just going to do a skip from level 4 to 46 because I don't think we really need to see that process again. But at 47, this is what your stats should look like. Every single skill other than survival is where it needs to be. Survival needs to go up to 79. But if we just take a second to look here at my diagram, we can see all of the skills highlighted in yellow. That is the base number that each skill needs to be at to finish leveling it off with the books in the game. And all the highlighted orange numbers are all of the totals of every single book in the game, base game and DLC. 
Before we hop into talking about how we can exploit the large amount of 9mm rounds to any other ammo source that we have, I think it's best since we're already on the topic of perks to talk about the perk Wild Wasteland and why you would choose it or why you wouldn't choose it. And it comes down to a simple choice between two different weapons. Now, having Wild Wasteland allows you to access to certain interactions throughout the game, as well as other items. But the biggest difference when it comes down to it is the choice between two different weapons. And the location that I'm at right now is the spot that you would get either of the weapons depending on if you have Wild Wasteland or if you don't have Wild Wasteland. For me, the easiest way to remember where to go is this straight line here on the map. It's the farthest left straightest road and you basically just follow that all the way up. You can see it kind of goes with the grid line to where I'm at and that basically leads to the, to the location that we need to be at. There's also, if you have the DLC, the Northern Passage. It's just west of that. If you have a wild wasteland, this is basically the interaction that you are going to have here. Okay, I should be good. I got my stealth boy. But uh, there goes the captain, as a captain should, being um, on his toes. And there goes one of his cadet's heads. Yep, just ripped straight off, clean like a doll's head. Jeez, man. Even the sound it made, that was... Wow. This guy, he knows something's, something's up. He's not, he's not a dummy. It's the captain. It's the alien captain. Of course, he's got, he's got his wits about him. Of course. But that doesn't mean that he can't die. Wow, he's got a lot of health. Unfortunately, I could not keep hidden, even with the stealth boy. But we're just gonna have to do it the old-fashioned way. Shotgun straight to the face! Damn, that took a lot of hits, dude. What the hell? But now he's in pieces. And I can take his loot. Alien Captain. Alien Blaster. This is... The shears need Hell yeah, dude. Get some of those alien cells, which you will never be able to find any more of those alien cells in the game. Those are the only ones. And they actually they actually all have some pretty good loot. Now here is the interaction that you will have in this location if you do not have a wild wasteland. Howdy. Howdy. Hey there. Howdy. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> oh my, bro, there is absolutely no way you saw me. I was still hidden. That's why you're second. What you, you could explode it. <gasps> there goes your entire arm. They killed him. Yeah, I killed all of them. Yes, that's how that happened. Now, if we come over to the mercenary with the combat armor. We will find he has a YCS-186. This gun is insane. So now that we know which guns we get, let's kind of take a little review of each of them. This is the YCS. And it is more of a sniper rifle. Plasma gun, basically. And keep in mind, please, that I also have the perk called Meltdown, which kind of increases the damage of these types of weapons of energy weapons but it also adds a little death effect which is that green explosion that wouldn't normally happen and you're gonna see the same effect whenever we showcase the alien blaster but just to show what this gun can really do we'll see here that I get this kill at the furthest amount of range that I can get because he actually despawns completely at the render range that I was at, which is pretty insane. But if you are using the ammo exploit and you try to use vats more than once, this is going to happen to you. Now 
Now let's take a look here at the alien blaster. It's definitely more of a mid to close range weapon. I'm using a controller so I'm uh, not too good at aiming with this gun. But it also does kind of have a little bit of a... The accuracy isn't really that great on this gun to begin with. So, And because you don't really have a scope and it's not an instant shot, there are definitely differences between this and the YCS. But it's still really good damage. And the fact that we can get infinite ammo with this gun, it actually makes it a pretty viable option to have. So let's talk about the final exploit, which is basically an infinite rotation of ammo. So we have our insane amount of 9mm rounds that we got from exploiting Chet's dialogue option. And we can apply this to any ammo source, including throwing spears, grenades, dynamite, etc. So let's talk about what we're going to need to do, which is pretty interesting and I had to find out the hard way, testing it out myself. But basically, we need to equip the weapon of the ammo source that we're trying to use for the exploit in order to do this. So we equip the weapon and you bring up the hotkey menu, you swap over to the ammo source and you would then equip it to wherever you would like to assign it on the hotkey menu. But for some reason, when you're using a keyboard and mouse, you're just not able to do this. I, I don't know if there's any other way that you need to do it to make it happen, but there are some tricks that we can pull out to make it happen if you have a controller. Just again, reminding people that are just skipping around the video, which is cool, but I am on the Steam version of the game on PC. So whenever I plug my controller in, you can see that it pops up right here where my mouse is. We can click on it. And if you're not able to use your controller, it's because your Steam looks like that. See, if I hop in game, I could move my mouse a little bit, but I can't do anything with my controller. So once we're in this menu, we can go enable Steam controller, Steam input, and it basically, that's what allows us to use the controller in Fallout New Vegas. So as we can see here, I'm just uh, moving my stick, kind of control my dude for just a second, making sure I got all the controls. It's looking nice. And we can do this weirdness that for some reason, again, it only works on a controller for some reason. Let me know if you know any other ways for keyboard and mouse, but let's get into this. So, again, we're going to need to have the weapon equipped that is attached to the ammo source that we're trying to exploit. So that, for us, would be the 9mm pistol. We'll equip that, and then we have to hold... The entire time while we're doing this, we have to hold the hotkey button and we'll use the left analog. We're going to use the left analog to switch over to the ammo section. And then we can just equip the 9mm rounds wherever we want that source to be. Which I chose 8 here. And it turns red, just like so. It's it's quite quite a bit of madness and I we love it. So I'm just going to disconnect my controller here because I'm not trying to use my controller in this game. I will be using keyboard and mouse. It's just a little bit more comfortable playing Fallout this way for me lately. I, I, I'm on and off with controller or keyboard and mouse, but lately I'm just on keyboard. So let us now have some fun with this. Hell yes. So I'm going to hop into my inventory and see what I've got to exploit. The Mercenary's Grenade Rifle. That sounds fun. You can see I'm on keyboard and mouse and it's still red, which is perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. Gonna pull out the Grenade Rifle. You can see I use some ammo and it takes off from the bottom right here. It's depleting. And then, as soon as I press 8, it'll change to that beautiful number that beautiful exploited number we gotta love it we gotta love it that's what I'm talking about baby 
Now, before we get too crazy, jumping off water towers and losing ourselves the location of our snow globe. Yes, let's go grab that before we lose it forever or just forgetting about it completely. So one final thing before we leave Good Springs is south near the school. There is Victor Shack and what I'm about to say that applies to Vector Shack applies to all the other small shack locations around the entire map of Fallout New Vegas. And that is every single one of these small shacks is guaranteed to have an ammunition box inside. And every single ammunition box in the game everywhere has a chance to spawn a stealth boy. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. It's the truth. And if there's multiple ammunition boxes, there's two chances for you to get a stealth boy in one run, baby. Because that happened to me. And I was... You know the... You understand the odds of that? But the idea is because there are so many of these small shack location markers around the entire map. Basically, you can just put a save point right before you first walk into the door. It has to be before your first time entering. And then just reload if there wasn't a stealth boy in the ammunition box. But again, every single ammunition box gives you that opportunity for a stealth boy. Probably like one of the best items in the game. And yeah, let's just ride this wave. Okay, let's ride the wave to go get the rest of the books. Let's get all of our skill points maxed out to 100. You know what I'm talking about, baby. This is what we want. This is what we're looking for. Now we get to actually play the game as a complete badass. We still got three levels, two more perks we got to choose, and a world full of books that we got to pick up. Baby, this game is amazing, incredible. And I wish for you to enjoy it as much as I have playing it as a kid and even now. So enjoy the rest of the footage that I got for you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and let me know what craziness you've gotten into and what has or hasn't worked. Let's discuss these things. I love you and peace.
You need to be careful. It's dangerous out here. See that you do. Uh, well, of course not. We just wouldn't want anything to happen to you is all. Well, sure you can, friend. But everyone needs a hand from time to time. Maybe you return the favor one day. I saved your life, so I kind of feel responsible for you is all. <laughs> I like you, friend. Have I mentioned that? See you around, buckaroo. you now.